Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Edwards. I'm back for another computer lesson this week. Hope you're all doing well and you're getting um, a lot of things done with your virtual learning. I know it can be frustrating and you're just learning how to navigate Teams and how to use it, so hang in there. I'm sure it's getting a little bit easier already. Uh, we're only in the second week of school and I have heard wonderful things about all of our virtual students. So today, I'd like to talk a little bit about online safety. We're using the computers a lot more, um, and I do teach online safety and digital citizenship in my regular in-person classes. So now more than ever, I think it's important for us to have a few lessons on internet safety. We'll be talking about it this week and possibly next week. Um, if you've heard some of these things before, that's great. It's always important for them to be reinforced and for you to keep learning them uh, throughout the whole year and throughout your whole time using technology. So um, I'm here to talk to you about how to be a good digital citizen, um, how to keep yourself and your friends safe online. So I want you to think about for a second, we're going to take a second pause, and I want you to think about in your own mind, what does it mean to you to be a good digital citizen? As you're thinking about that, I'm going to pull up a presentation that we're going to be looking at together. So I'm going to be screen sharing it with you in just a moment. Okay. All right, so I hope you thought about it for a second and we're going to uh, learn a little bit about being a good digital citizen. Uh, we're going to be using um, the NetSmarts Kids guide and curriculum. I've used them before. I've also used information from Common Sense Media um, and other websites that I've found to be very useful. So I like to use a lot of different resources so you get a large variety of opinions on the topic. So being a good digital citizen. Um, I think that we're going to get started. Oh, oh, is it our turn yet? Yes, Webster. Why don't you say hello to our new friend? I want to just make sure that the volume's turned up. OK. Hello, everybody. We are Webster. Whoa, they're right there. Sorry, Nettie. I'm just so excited to hang out with kids like us and talk about internet safety. It is pretty great. We can share all the things we've learned about being good digital citizens and teach them the four rules of internet safety. Yeah, let's get started. <coughs> Aren't you forgetting something? Whoops. Uh, hey, Clicky. Clicky is our trusted adult. He helps us stay safer online. And now we're going to help you by teaching you how to UIN. Use your NetSmarts. That means making smart and safer decisions when you're online. So now let's get started. Okay, Clicky? All right, buddy. All right. So um, thanks, Nettie and Webster. And we met Clicky. Um, before we get started, we need to talk about what it actually means to be online. We can't talk about being safe online. if We don't actually know what that means, right? So I'll stop screen sharing for a second so you can see my face while I'm talking to you about this. And um, because you can do so much online, uh, we're going to talk about what that means. So. You can go online on a lot of different ways, as you saw in the picture that I was showing, and I'm going to show it again in a minute. Um, so I want you to raise your hand while I'm talking if you've ever gone online using certain things. So a desktop or a laptop computer, cell phone, a music player or an iPod, a tablet, like an iPad or a Kindle or a Samsung tablet. Also, you can access the Internet through gaming devices like your Nintendo DS, 
maybe a PlayStation or an Xbox. Um, Nintendo Switches are in right now. Uh, so you can go online view viewing any of those things. Um, so now that we've talked about that, what kind of things can you do online? Okay, what kind of things can be done on there? And that's what we're going to talk about now. I'm going to pull up the PowerPoint again. So, stuff to do online. Um, I bet some of you have done a few of these things. I bet some of you have watched YouTube videos. Maybe you've watched um, TikTok videos. They're big right now. Maybe you've played games on your parents' cell phone or your own cell phone. Um, perhaps you've done things like video chatted or FaceTime. I know you're actually video chatting for school right now, so that's definitely a check mark that everybody can make. Um, Maybe use your email to sign up for different accounts. Um, if you needed to download something, there's a lot of times that you can only do that when you make an account or create an account. Even having an app store, you have to have a Gmail or an iTunes account. Nowadays, you can't just have a phone without having those things pretty much for the most part. Um, maybe you've made friends on virtual worlds. I know that a lot of students that I have talked to before, they enjoy playing Roblox and you can interact with different people. Um, I know in school, uh, some of my classes use Prodigy Math. I don't know if any of the other schools use that and you can interact with other people in a safe way uh, that's monitored by the teacher, but in some other worlds, maybe you don't have that monitoring. And as you get older, you're only going to be um, online and using it more, not less. So once you get older, you'll be using the internet to purchase things, um, buy things. You will be paying bills online. A lot of people pay bills online. Um, share pictures or messages on social media sites and things like that. Um, Although some of you may have social media sites already, although most sites you have to be 13 years of age or older to join. I know that those things happen if you have parental permission. So um, as you get older, you'll just be doing more and more things online. So being online has a lot of risks. So it's important that we have a discussion and talk about how to deal with those things. So. How could we deal with inappropriate content, sharing personal information, um, people asking you to meet offline, and cyberbullying? Uh, Mrs. Edwards knows that some of these sound scary, but I know also that you can handle it um, because you guys are smart, you're talented, and I have complete faith in all of you uh, that you would be able to do this. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is what I listed was inappropriate content. There's a lot of stuff online like videos, pictures, stories, games, advertisements, activities. A lot of this stuff can be really great, but there's also some things on there that are just for adults and that could upset you. These things could include fighting or hurting each other. Uh, people that use inappropriate or bad language and breaking the rules uh, with doing pranks or doing things that are illegal and the behaviors aren't something that that we would like to see. Um, and I'm being honest with you. I'm being realistic with you. These things are out there. Seeing these things might make you feel sad. They might make you feel scared. They might make you feel confused especially if you come across some of these things on accident while you're trying to do homework or looking for something else. You might think that you might get in trouble or someone might be mad at you. Um, here's an example. Sometimes when you're on a website, uh, another window might pop up. It's called a pop up without you doing anything at all to pull it up. This is called a pop up and you may have seen one while you're on a gaming site. Sometimes pop ups have advertisements for new games or uh, for something that might look interesting to you. Yet the other day in class, 
I had the students doing some research and one of the advertisements was for a video game that was not rated for them. They were a younger group of kids and the video game pop up was for a high school grade. OK, so they did the right thing. They called Mrs. Edwards over. I got rid of it. They didn't get in trouble. Um, it may be upsetting, but don't worry. There are steps that you can deal with or to take to deal with this inappropriate content. Um, and we're going to talk about that in a second. So let's go back to our, our presentation so we can see what's next and what we're going to look at next. OK, so let's see. Uh, if you see something inappropriate online, there are several things that you can do to get rid of it. You can hit your back arrow in your web browser. It'll take you back to someplace safe that you were at previously. OK, you can hit the X button and tell a trusted adult. If you're in school, you can tell your teacher. If you're at home, you can tell whoever is the adult in the household. OK. You can try to refresh it. Maybe it was a misconnection or I know you can't see this is a, a tablet, but you could hit your power button. You could just turn it off and tell somebody right away. These are all different things that you can do. OK, turn it off, go back, close it. OK, and so now we're going to talk about some rules. Rule number one. There we go. We have Webster here to help us. Uh, if you don't like what you're seeing online, you think that it's inappropriate and not for you, uh, you can tell a trusted adult. OK, that's our rule number one. OK, tell a trusted adult. Always important. Um, now that doesn't mean tell your brother who's a year younger than you because you might call him over and then he's going to see it. OK, so you want to tell somebody Who's older? Somebody who you can trust with helping you to figure out what to do next. OK, um, you should always tell a trusted adult. This could be your mom, dad, aunt, uncle. Um, tell them about what you've seen. It can feel scary to tell an adult. Sometimes you you might be worried that telling them will get you in more trouble uh, or that you'll get blamed for it. But know that it's not your fault if it was an accident. OK, they can help explain what you've seen and answer your questions that you might have. They also can report the contact to the website or the app that you're using. Um, if you don't like what you see online, we talked about it. You're going to tell a trusted adult, OK? And we're going to watch a video. About um, something that happens with Webster and Nettie. So let's go back to our presentation. OK, and let's see. When you see something online. Oh. Sounds, miss that word sound isn't working. See, tech difficulties, but I'm working through it. Because I want to be able to share the screen with you. Thanks for being patient. All right, here we go. And let's try this one again. I'm going to go. OK, here we go. When you see something online that makes you uncomfortable, you should tell a tr trusted adult. But that's not always easy. Some kids are embarrassed to tell or they think they'll get in trouble. But a trusted adult is someone who will listen to you. They care about how you feel and want to help. Whenever Webster and I see something that makes us sad, scared, or confused online, we tell Clicky, our trusted adult. And it's easier than you'd think. The last time I was online, I saw something that confused me. I closed the browser right away, but I was still upset. What did you do next? Well... I went to Clicky. I told him I was typing in the URL to my favorite gaming website when I accidentally typed in the wrong address. The website that came up instead, ugh. Anyway, Clicky gave me a hug 
and told me it wasn't my fault. He went to my computer and blocked that site. And he wasn't mad at all? Nope. I was really glad I told him. It made me feel a lot better. All right. Thanks, Cookie and Nettie. That was great. Okay, we're going to go to our next thing. So we want to think about what would you do in that situation? So if that was happening and... Um, I'm so sorry. And you were dealing with that, what would you do? So I'm going to read a scenario to you and I want you to think about it. So you're checking your email. So say your teacher sends you something in an email when suddenly a new email appears in your inbox. It looks like it's from a friend. So you decide to open it and there's a link inside. You click on it because you think maybe it's something funny your friend has shared with you. The link sends you to a video that you don't want to see. What would you do? I want you to think about it. If you have somebody next to you, you can tell them what you think. If you don't have somebody next to you, think about it in your mind, okay? It's hard being on video because I can't have you share it with me as if we were in the live lesson. So, if I was thinking about this, I would probably think that you would tell me something like maybe you would click the X. So if you said that, great job. Um, maybe you would tell your mom or your teacher or your grandpa. OK, all good answers. Tell a trusted adult. All right. Let's do another one. I like the scenarios. So here's a second one. Um, imagine that you're watching videos online with a friend. After you finish watching your video, another one that you didn't click on starts playing directly after it or automatically. And the first couple of words is some bad language. What should you do? Think about it. I'm gonna tell you what you shouldn't do. You shouldn't keep watching it, okay? You should close it, like they showed us in the video. Click your back arrow in your browser and tell a trusted adult, okay? It's not okay to freak out either. You don't want to see something like this and freak out. That's why we're having these conversations. I want you to be able to know what to do. All right, so you can stay calm, cool, and collected. So you're going to exit, or you're going to click your back arrow, or you're going to tell a trusted adult. Okay, every time this happens, you're going to do it. Okay, I have a bunch of other scenarios, but I'm not going to post them. Uh, maybe I'll post them as an activity for you to do. Okay. I'm confident that if you guys see inappropriate content online that you'll know exactly what to do. You might have noticed one common thing while you were doing these scenarios. Always the answer at the end of the day is to tell a trusted adult. As an elementary student, you know, you're still learning how to use technology. So you want to make sure you're letting somebody know, somebody who knows how to use it better than you, what is going on. In all of the scenarios, finding inappropriate content was an accident. It's important to make sure that you're not looking for that content on purpose, no matter how curious you might be. You are not old enough. You need to stick to what you're allowed to use. All right, very important. So we just were talking about the inappropriate content but there's also other types of information online, um, maybe even information about yourself, and that's called personal information. And there's a lot of different things uh, that can be included as personal information. And in our presentation, uh, we're going to see on our next slide. So personal information can include things like your full name, your email address, your home address, school address, uh, dropping a pin if you know how to do that, sharing your location, 
or your phone number or your parents phone number. These things are personal. Now I'm not talking about um, sharing these things within your school network like we're doing virtual learning. I'm talking about using them in public forums. So our next rule is talking about when is it OK to share? When you ask your parent or guardian and they say yes, OK? So we want to trust the people that we share. So let's go ahead and watch the next video. To share or not to share? Oh, I'm just kidding. There's no video for this one. So we have our address. To share or not to share? Number one. OK, we have our address with you and a friend. All right, so we have you and a friend and you may want to think about sharing, but it's not always that simple, okay? Sometimes you may want to share some information online. Tell me if the information is personal and if so, what should you do next, okay? So you and your friend made a video. You got permission from your parents to put it online but you watch it one more time before you post it, and while you're watching it, you notice that your address is accidentally on a piece of mail on the table. So in the video, you can see where you live. Is your home address personal information? Mm-hmm, it is, okay? So think about what you should do. All right, so here is, based on this question that I've asked before, the best answer that I've ever gotten about this was to tell your parents that you can see the, the address in the video. That's step one. And then ask if they can help you blocking it or removing it from the video. That way you could still post it. If they can't help you doing that, you shouldn't post the video. If they're able to help you edit the video so that you can't see the address, um, I would say that you're good to go. All right. All right, so let's take a look now at the next slide that we have coming up. OK, um, here we go. Let's see. Um, oh, you take a picture of your new phone, check out my new phone. Text me at 555-5555, okay? Um, let's see, do we think that we should share this information? Um, when you have a new cell phone number and you wanna share it with your friends, okay? You should never post it on any type of account or social media account so that people can see it, okay? That's not OK. Um, it's a bad idea to share a phone number online because it makes it easier for anybody to see it, people that you might not even know. And then you might start getting calls from them. Um, not very safe, not safe at all. Um, let's talk about this personal information. Uh, let's go back to the scenarios. I know that I like those. So say you're exploring a virtual world on a gaming website and you meet someone new. You've been writing messages back and forth with this person and suddenly they ask you what your favorite color is. Do you think that asking your favorite color and sharing your favorite color is personal information? Yeah, I was thinking no too. So no, personal information is information that can be used to identify you. Now, there might be 100,000 people that also have the same color like red. Um, so I don't think that someone could identify you based on your favorite color. I would say it's OK to share that type of information. Pretty, pretty, pretty sure. All right, so let's do another one. Imagine you're playing a game on your mom or dad's phone. When you see a new window appear asking if you would like to buy extra lives for 99 cents. Is this asking you personal information? So again, they're asking you on a game if you want to buy extra lives for 99 cents. Now I've seen this happen to me a lot when I'm playing a game. 
I used to like to play Candy Crush, and this would happen a lot. So the answer that I would come up with is yes, because um, to, in order to buy that, you would have to enter in someone's number of their card, their credit card, and that is personal information. Can you make a purchase? Um, you, as a little kid, cannot, okay? Now, could you ask mom and dad to do it for you? Yes, yes, that would be okay if they say yes. But in no way, shape, or form could you physically use their card uh, without their knowledge. That's inappropriate. Okay, we're going to do one more, one more, okay? Personal information. Your best friend wants you to share a password or an email account. Is your password personal information? Hoping you all just said yes or shook your head. So what should you do? Okay, um, I wouldn't share your password with anyone other than your parent, guardian, or your teacher. Okay, uh, not even if they're your best friend. Even if your friend means well, they could accidentally lose your password, change your password, or let somebody else into your account without your knowledge. Okay, so I would not share passwords unless it's with your parent, guardian, teacher, um, or a leader of um, a group that you're in or something. Never friends or strangers, okay? Um, those scenarios were fun. You did a great job. Uh, part of being a good digi digital citizen is protecting yourself and your friends by keeping your personal information private, okay? You don't have to ever share that with a website, an app, just because they've asked especially if it's not somewhere that you're trusting, okay? All right, so the next thing that we're gonna talk about, we're gonna move to next week, um, and, it's and we're gonna talk about meeting people new online. Um, because sometimes I know when you're playing a game or something, it, it can seem interesting to meet someone online, um, but I know I've been talking for a while, so what I'm gonna do is underneath the video, I'm gonna post another scenario, like the one we talked about with personal information and the ones that we talked about with, um, you know, inappropriate content. So we talked about rule number one. Let me share back to you so you can see what I'm talking about one more time. So we talked about rule number one, okay? Don't like what you see online, tell a trusted adult. Okay, and we also talked about rule number two. When is it okay to share personal information? Okay, so rule number one, tell a trusted adult if you see inappropriate content. Rule number two, only share personal information when your parent allows you. Okay, two rules. There's two more. So next week for computer, we're going to go over rule number three and rule number four. All right. I had a great time talking with you guys today. I know this lesson was a little longer than last time, but think about it if you were in class, your lesson would be 40 minutes, okay? So I didn't wanna keep you too long or too short. So I'm gonna post another scenario underneath the video, and I'd like for you to comment your answer. Your answer can be one to two sentences, doesn't have to be too long, as long as you answer the question. All right, so I hope that we can um, learn rule number three and four with our NetSmarts kids next week. And I can't wait to see you. Um, just like I was teaching in a regular class, sometimes you stumble over your words or, you know, you mess up. That's life, okay? Um, videos can't be perfect all the time. And uh, um, I just thought that I should tell you that because um, I know that I'm going to rewatch the video and notice some things I could have done better or some things I could have done differently. So this way, you know, you know that it would be just like that in live instruction. So I want you to get the all you can get. OK, so stay safe online until next week. Bye. Have a good week.